In this video, we're going to look at relative formula mass, which is also part of the CC9 topic and can come up on paper one and on paper two. Before we look at relative formula mass itself, we need to be sure that we are comfortable reading chemical formula. So I've written here that chemical formula tells you what elements are present, but it also tells you the number of atoms of each element present in a substance. And they can ask these questions where they give you a chemical formula and they ask you to write down how many elements are present or how many atoms are present. If you're asked for the number of elements present, you do not need to use the numbers that are in the formula. All you need to do is count the different elements and you can easily do that by counting the different, how many capital letters you've got. So the first one you've got KF, K is potassium, F is fluorine, two different capital letters to represent two different elements. The next one, NAF, yes, you've got three different letters, but only two of them are capital. The capital N and the small a go together and they're the symbol for uh, sodium and then the F is going to be fluorine. So again, two capital letters, two elements. The next one you've got MG and then you've got a capital O. So the MG is the symbol for magnesium. The O is the symbol for oxygen. Two capital letters, two elements. Okay, if I go down to, one, uh, to H2O, this one has a number in it. But as I said, you don't need to use the numbers when counting the number of elements. You just count the capital letters. So you've got hydrogen and you've got oxygen, two capital letters, two elements present, okay? This next one can be maybe a little bit confusing because you've got a, a symbol here that could be a, a lowercase l or it could be a capital I, okay? It is a lowercase l, this is a symbol for, for chlorine, so I've only got two capital letters here. I've got calcium, and I've got chlorine, so I've got two elements in total. So again, I'm not counting the numbers, I'm just counting the elements. Pause the video here, try and fill in the rest of this row yourself, press play when you're ready to see the answers. Okay, so here are the answers. I'm not gonna go through them all, but just to draw your attention to this one at the end, AL is aluminium, that is again a lowercase l, so aluminium, nitrogen and oxygen giving you three elements and it's the same in the last one al is aluminium sulfur and oxygen giving you three elements okay that's the number of elements present you can also be asked to calculate the number of atoms present and in this case you do need to use the numbers that are present in the formula if we look at our first example kf there are no numbers and if there's no number directly after the symbol it means you've just got one so i have got one potassium I have got one fluorine in total, I have got two atoms. The next one's gonna be the same. I've got one sodium, I've got one fluorine, in total, I have got two atoms. With magnesium, there's no number after magnesium. I've got one magnesium, I've got one oxygen, I've got two atoms. But when I get down to H2O, this is the first formula where I have a number. The two comes after the hydrogen, so the two, tells me that I've got two hydrogens. I've got no number after oxygen, which means I've just got one oxygen. So I'm adding the two and the one together, and I am getting three atoms in total. For CaCl2, there's no number after the Ca, so I've just got one calcium. There's a two after the chlorine. So again, I've got one calcium, I've got two chlorines in total, I have got three atoms. I'll let you do some of these yourself, but I'm going to skip down a few until we get to the brackets. You need to know how to use the brackets. So if I look at the first one here, I've got calcium. There is no number after calcium, and calcium is not in the bracket. So therefore, I have just got one calcium. Oxygen is in the bracket, and there is a two outside the bracket. So I've got one oxygen in the bracket, but there's a two outside the bracket. And just like in maths, brackets mean multiply, which means I have got two oxygens. And with hydrogen, hydrogen's inside the bracket. There's a two outside the bracket. That tells me I have got two hydrogens. I add up those numbers, one, two, and two, and I get five, five atoms in total. If I come down here to do this one, 
Again, I've got calcium. It's not inside the bracket. There's no number directly afterwards. I've just got one calcium. Nitrogen's in the bracket. I've got one nitrogen in the bracket and a two outside the bracket. Bracket is multiply. I've got two nitrogens in total. With the oxygen, I've got a three inside the bracket and a two outside. I've got three oxygens in the bracket, a two outside. Brackets means multiply, so it's three times two. I've got six oxygens in total. So I've got one calcium, two nitrogen, six oxygens. I add all that up and I've got nine atoms in total. Press pause, do the other six yourself. Press play when you're ready to see the answers. Okay, so you can see the answers. I'll just do the last two with you, which maybe they're the hardest ones. Uh, so I've got aluminium outside the bracket. I've just got one nitrogen's in the bracket, one nitrogen in, but a three outside, so three nitrogens. Three oxygens in the bracket, but a three outside. Remember, I'm multiplying, so three times three, nine oxygens. So nine and three and one is 13. And then at the end, I've got two aluminiums, sulfurs inside the bracket, three outside, so three sulfurs, Four oxygens in, three outside, four times three is 12. 12 oxygens, add that up, and you get 17 in total. Okay, so once you are comfortable reading chemical formula, you are ready for relative formula mass. And in relative formula mass, you will add the mass of each atom in the formula. And sometimes students say to me, oh, I can never remember, am I supposed to add the mass or do I multiply the mass? Because students often make that mistake, I'm just gonna show you, all right, with fruit, how easy relative formula mass is, okay? If I told you you had a banana, an apple, and an orange, and I gave you the mass of each piece of fruit, and then I told you that you had one banana, one apple, and one orange, and I wanted to know the total mass of those three pieces of fruit, okay? If you're trying to find the total mass, you know that you've got a banana, which is 50 grams, you know you've got an apple, which is 20 grams, you've got an orange, which is 60 grams, you want to know the total, you are going to add those numbers together. 50 and 20 is 70 and 60 is 130 grams, okay? If you were doing it with fruit, you would never even think about multiplying those numbers. You would know that to find the total mass, you would add those numbers together. And it's gonna be exactly the same as with atoms. You're gonna be adding the mass of each of those atoms in the formula. We'll just do one other example with fruit, okay? This time you've got two bananas, an apple, and four oranges, okay? Because I've got two bananas, each of them has a mass of 50 grams, so it's gonna be 50 grams, plus another 50 grams for my two bananas. My one apple is gonna be 20 grams. And then I've got my four oranges. Now, it's gonna be a bit tedious for me to write out 60 plus 60 plus 60 plus 60, okay? So instead, that's when I am gonna use a multiplication sign. I'm gonna write four times 60 just to make it a little bit easier. But once I've worked out that four times 60 is uh, 240, then I'm gonna take that 240, so that's 240, and I'm gonna add it to the 20, the 50, and the 50 that I had before. So yes, you can use multiplication just so you don't have to write the whole thing out, but one, once you've worked it out, the mass of those four oranges, you'll then add it to the mass of the apple and the mass of the two bananas, all right? I have another example there, which I'm not gonna go through, okay? It's the same as before. You're gonna have 50 grams from the bananas, Three apples, again, to save me writing it all out, I do three times 20, and then I've got nine oranges, nine times 60. I work out what these are individually, so three times 20, I've got 60 grams of apples, and I've got 540 grams of oranges, but then I add the three numbers together to get my total mass of fruit. When we're doing this with atoms, it's going to be exactly the same, okay? Here, I've got the name of four elements, sodium, oxygen, hydrogen, and sulfur, and I've got the mass. I'm getting the mass from the periodic table. So these numbers are coming from the periodic table. There are two numbers next to each element, and the mass number is the bigger of the two. So the mass of sodium is 23, oxygen is 16, and so on. So this information is provided on the periodic table, but often they include it in the actual question. You are asked to calculate the relative formula mass of NaOH, and we use this symbol MR to calculate, uh, sorry, to represent relative formula mass. I know that the mass of sodium is 23, 
I know the mass of oxygen is 16. I know the mass of hydrogen is 1. And to get the total mass of these atoms, I'm going to add these numbers together and I'm going to get 40. Okay, and that's all I have to do. You're given the mass numbers, add them together, you're going to get the answer. In the next example, H2SO4, it's like what I said above when you had two bananas and four oranges. Okay, it's going to be Sorry, I'm just going to write that N-A, the O and the H, that's where I'm getting that from. Okay, for this one, H2SO4, hydrogen has a mass of one. But from reading my chemical formula, I can see I've got two hydrogens. So I'm going to write one plus one. I've got one sulfur, which is going to be 32. And then I've got four oxygens, each of them with a mass of 16. So rather than writing it 16 four times, I'm just going to put in a bracket four times 16. This part here, the one plus one is from my H2, the 32 is from my sulfur, and then the four times 16 is because I've got four oxygens, okay? So I work this out, uh, four times 16 is 64, and then I add the 32 and the two, 64 and two is 66, and two is 68, three is 98 is going to be your final answer, okay? The next one, same again, Na2O, I've got two sodiums, I've got one oxygen. I can see here that sodium has a mass of 23, so that's 23 plus 23, they're my two sodiums, and then oxygen is 16. So this is the NO2, sorry, Na2, and this is the O. I add that together, 23 and 23 is 46, and 10 is 56, and 6 is 62. Okay, and that's relative formula mass. They are all done in the same way. I'm going to give you a few questions to practice now. I have given you the atomic masses, so the numbers from the periodic table. So, and you're asked to calculate the relative formula mass, so just using the numbers I've provided you, find the relative formula mass. Make sure you are reading your chemical formula correctly. So, for example, in the second one, N2, you've got two nitrogens. Each nitrogen has a mass of 14. It's going to be 14 plus 14. Press pause, have a go, and press play when you're ready to see the answers. Okay, if we go to the answers, you should have gotten 81 for the first one, 28, 71, and 44. Hopefully those three were relatively straightforward. If not, just look at the solutions that I've done for you. In question five, I've done these ones already, 98 and 40 for five and six. I'm gonna focus on the last four with the brackets. 56, 78, 164, and 110. So again, really important that you're reading the formula correctly. Here I've got one magnesium, which is, oh no, it's not 23, sorry, it's 24. Oh, magnesium, apologies, is 24, it is not 23, that would be sodium, which means that this answer should be 57. So magnesium is 24, you've got two oxygens, so two times 16, two hydrogens, so two times one. You add that all together and you get 57. Um, with aluminium, sorry, actually, no, you don't get 57, you do get 58. Why should you be using a calculator? Well, ideally you should be able to do this mental maths without a calculator, but it's good to double check on a calculator. Sorry, so that one should be 58. This one, aluminium, you've got one aluminium, which is 27. You've got three oxygens, so it's gonna be three times 16, and then three hydrogens. Add that all together. Remember, you're adding them all together at the end, and you should get 78. Um, calcium has a mass of 40. You've got two nitrogens. And you've got three times two, six oxygens. Add all of that up and you get 164. And at the end, two lithiums, one sulfur, four oxygens. Add that all up and you get 110, okay? So make sure you are reading the formula correctly. Once you know how many atoms you have got, you can add the masses together to find your relative formula mass.